They say in cybersecurity, you've got to pick a side, red team or blue team. But in 2025, things aren't that simple anymore. Hey everyone, Luke here. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. I'm a career coach and cybersecurity recruiter. And my goal is to help you in your career and your cyber journey. Now, I actually covered this topic about a year ago and people seem to enjoy it, but a lot has changed since then. So today I want to give you an updated look at the red team versus blue team debate from a recruiter and career coach's perspective. We'll talk about what they actually do, the blue team and the red team, how the job market shifted in 2025, or which path might be right for you. So let's get right into it. Section one, the basics. What are red and blue teams? Now, for those of you who don't know, I want you to think of it like a chess game. The red team are the attackers, ethical hackers who simulate real world threats to test how strong an organization's security is. They don't break things for fun. They do it to find gaps before real criminals do. Now, a typical red team engagement might be called a penetration test or a pen test or a red team exercise. Now, those vary in scope from a single web app test to a months long simulation where the team tries to get from an email to full access. Now, red teams run recon, map targets. They craft exploits and they try to move laterally through systems. Their outputs are things like vulnerability reports, exploit proofs and remediation plans. There may be tools that you'll hear about, such as vulnerability scanners, exploit frameworks, phishing toolkits, and lots of custom scripts. And these are things that I look for on resumes. But the most important thing is mindset, thinking like an attacker. Now, the blue team, on the other hand, are the defenders. They build and operate the system that detect and stop the attackers. So that means turning detection tools, monitoring alarms, investigating suspicious activity and responding to incidents. Now, a typical day for a blue teamer, especially a SOC analyst, for example, can include reviewing alerts, chasing false positives, and working with engineers to harden systems. Outputs look different. Incident reports, detection rules, playbooks, and system hardening changes. Now, tools that you'll probably hear about, you have seams like Splunk or Microsoft Sentinel. You have EDR tools, so endpoint detection and response. So you've got cloud security controls and automation scripts to reduce manual work. And how do they interact though? Well, traditionally red attacks and blue defends. Then red writes a report and blue fixes things. So once again, red attacks, blue defends, red writes a report, blue fixes things. But in practice now they often work together and that's called purple teaming. And what that is, is a collaborative loop where red tests and blue improves detections and both tune the environment. So red finds gaps, blue closes them and both learn from each other. Now, from a hiring perspective, employers value people who understand both sides because that means better defense and a clearer re remediation. Okay, moving on to section two. So what's changed in 2025? Well, a year ago, the line between red and blue was pretty clear. But today, automation, AI, threat intelligence have blurred those boundaries. For example, blue teams now use AI-driven detection tools like Microsoft Copilot or CrowdStrike Charlotte AI to analyze logs and alerts faster, which means red teams are also using AI to generate payloads. They simulate phishing campaigns and they even find vulnerabilities faster than ever before. So now we see more purple team collaboration where the two sides work together to strengthen security instead of competing. And this has been a lot more prevalent in 2025. Okay, section three, red team path, the offensive side. So let's talk about that. Now, if you enjoy problem solving, you enjoy puzzles, and you enjoy thinking like a hacker, then this path might appeal to you. Typical roles includes penetration tester, ethical hacker, red team operator, exploit developer. And there are key skills that you need for this, such as networking fundamentals, scripting, so you need, I advise to look at Python, Bash, PowerShell, for example, vulnerability analysis and social engineering. These are all key skills that you'll need. But let's go a bit deeper. What do red teamers actually do? Well, they start with gathering as much information as possible about a target, domains, IPs, technologies used, even staff names. Then comes weaponization and exploitation. So crafting phishing emails, exploiting vulnerabilities, or even breaching misconfigured servers. But once inside, they perform privilege escalation and lateral movement, trying to reach sensitive data wrapping without being detective. And the final stage is reporting, clearly explaining every step they took, what they found, and how the organization can fix those weaknesses. Now, it's a high pressure and detailed work. You might spend 
hours trying one exploit that never lands, then find a simple misconfiguration that exposes everything. Now you might want to know about common certifications to go with this. So start with looking at the EJPT. This is a great starting point. Now, once you've got a little bit of experience in that, look at the OSCP. This is still the gold standard. And you also have the PNPT, which is practical and growing fast and the CEH. Now, this is more recognized by HR, but less technical, but helps open doors. So there are a selection of certifications that are available and you can look into it and go into more detail about which one you want to do. And feel free to reach out, happy to, to give you my advice on that. Salary-wise, mid-level red teamers in Australia can earn between 120 to 160K Aussie dollar. Now that depending on experience in industry. So if we look at the, the pros for this, it's exciting, it's creative, and you're constantly learning. Cons, you may argue it can be high pressure. That might not be for you. It's not for everyone. It's highly technical and documentation heavy. Accuracy is everything. So something to bear in mind if you're thinking about going down that path. All right, moving on to section four, the blue team path, the, the defensive side. So let's talk about what the blue team does. So if you're more analytical and you like the idea of protecting systems rather than breaking them then blue team is probably your part common roles include SOC analyst incident responder you have threat intelligent analysts you have security engineers key skills you need to learn things like scene tools like splunk or sentinel you need to know how to log analysis networking cloud security and scripting for automation they're probably the key skills that i look for on a resume when looking at more entry level blue team roles. So what does that look like day to day? Well, a blue teamer begins by reviewing system alerts from across the network. Things like failed logins, file changes, or network anomalies. These are things that are common. They correlate events across different tools to spot suspicious behavior. Now, if an alert looks serious, they open an instant ticket and then they start investigating. This might mean tracing the source of an IP address, isolating an effective endpoint, or working with IT to block any malicious traffic. They also do threat hunting, so they proactively go searching through data to find indicators of compromise before an attacker causes any real damage. Now, after an incident, they lead the post-mortem, which is writing up lessons learned, improving detection rules, and briefing leadership on risk reduction. And that's where your communication skills come in, which we've talked about before. A soft skill that's very important because you need to be able to communicate with stakeholders and other leaders in the business. Now, if we talk about certifications to consider, CompTIA Security Plus, gold standard for entry level, definitely recommend this. You also have the CYSA Plus, which is, offers solid foundations. Other ones to think about down the line, you have the GCIH, which is incident handling. And then now, if you're going down the cloud route, look at the Azure Security Engineer or the AWS Security Specialty. Once again, cloud is in a big period of growth and will continue to do that. And it's an area I do recommend looking at. I've done other videos on this and I'm happy to do more. Um, but definitely think about those certifications if you're going down that route. You're looking at salaries. They typically range here in Australia between 100 and 140K and blue team roles often have more consistent demand because every company needs defenders. And just to be clear on that, that isn't necessarily an entry level. That would be the average medium price of blue team roles in Australia. So let's talk about some of the pros of being in the blue team. Well, it offers strong job security, great pathways into leadership, and there's a constant collaboration across teams. So if you're someone that likes liaising with the business and liaising with other people, this would suit you. Cons, you could argue it could be repetitive early on. There's lots of monitoring, lots of triage before you move into proactive security engineering or architecture. But once again, have a think about this when you're trying to weigh out which one you want to look for. Okay, section five, a recruiter's insight and what's hiring in 2025. So here's what I see in the market right now. Now, once again, I can't possibly cover every geography here, every part of the planet, obviously I can't. So if we talk about Australia, the UK and the US, blue team roles are still hiring at a faster rate. There's a massive demand for SOC analysts, security engineers and cloud security specialists particularly cloud, I'm really seeing that growing. For red teams, jobs are growing too, especially consulting roles. That's what I'm seeing. But they're a smaller share of the market and companies usually want candidates with two to three years of defensive experience first. So if you were to ask what my advice would be, well, if you're breaking in, start blue. Build your foundation in detection, response and system hardening. Then once you've got experience and you understand how attackers operate, you can pivot into red team work if that's where your passion lies. But by starting in the blue team, I think you cover both sides and hiring managers really like that. 
It's what they often look for. Okay, section six. So what should you choose? Well, look, ultimately it comes down to personality. Do you love breaking things and finding flaws? Red team. Do you love protecting people, analyzing threats, solving problems, and you, you're calm under pressure? Blue team. But once again, there's no wrong choice, but, what you, but whichever you pick, focus on building real skills. Labs, hands-on projects, certifications that prove capability. That's what's getting attention from recruiters like me. So there you have it, red team versus blue team in 2025. The industry's evolved, AI is changing the game, and it's only gonna continue to do so more. And both sides, are in high demand. Now, if you, want to, if you want to know what specific jobs are actually hiring right now and how much they pay, check out my video on top entry-level cybersecurity roles in 2025. I'll link it in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, click like, subscribe to the channel. As always, keep leveling up your career. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.